Hello, it's Jasper. Welcome back. Good to be back into the uh, rhythm of making videos again, uh, working through the kinks. I know my big face was blocking some content last video, so still making it work, you know. But this is part two of the series on GeoGuessr tips for Canada. In part one, I outlined the series and I gave an introduction to basic Canada meta. But if you're already pretty familiar with Canada, I think you can get a lot out of this video without seeing part one. Today we're going west with a focus on British Columbia, as well as covering the basics for the Northern Territories. And we're doing it on location in British Columbia. If you notice the scenery change, um, we're not gonna be able to keep this up for very long, but for now. Uh, as we cycle through a few teasers of the landscape, expect to see a lot of evergreen trees, a lot of mountains. And uh, British Columbia is really one of my favorite places in Canada, just for sheer beauty, for sure. And I've grown up uh, and continue to come out here on vacation. So this video will focus overwhelmingly on BC with the majority of the coverage, and then we'll pivot to the territories at the end. Let's talk about the Google coverage that you'll find in BC, which is shown on the left, the Google coverage, but it's maybe easier to follow with the map on the right. So as with every Canadian province, the pro population is heavily skewed towards the south. Out west, you have Vancouver Island, which is definitely part of Canada if you weren't sure. And it looks very similar to the coastal regions nearby. Now, Greater Vancouver is here on the coast and it contains about half the population of BC. In general, BC has a few important east-west roads with Google coverage and with cars that are uh, going, cutting across the mountain ranges. And then it has a lot of north-south roads intersecting them along the mountain valleys. So the Yellowhead Highway here, number 16, runs through central BC. And almost everything north of the Yellowhead Highway uses the same Generation 2 coverage that you'll find in the Yukon. So we'll cover them together, um, except this bit out here at East, which we'll talk about. And then uh, there's the Highway 1, which kind of cuts through here. Those, those are kind of two of the main highways you can keep in mind. Now, the Northern Territories are Yukon, Northwest Territories, and, Cal uh, and Nunavut, and they're huge. Um, most of the coverage is in the Yukon, and the three colored regions that I've identified here are almost immediately recognizable, usually, because of their particular Gen 2 coverage. And before we leave, I'll also do a boss rush of the significant places in Nunavut, or Manitoba as it were. And the last I checked, Nunavut actually has no paved roads, so we'll just go through it really quickly. There's some places that you'll play, see a lot, especially if you play the Canada map. But before we get into region guessing, let's cover the BC province specific meta. So I'll try to do this with an eye towards which part of the world you might confuse it with. Now, obviously, because of the large mountains, you rarely confuse BC with any other part of Canada. And instead, you're more likely to confuse BC with the Western United States, or for a beginner, maybe Norway. But let's begin with a scene like this. So we're in a city. We can't see any mountains. How would we know that we're in BC? How could we know? You can even pause and look if you want to think about it. Um, the trees help. It's overcast and wet, um, but I don't know the trees well enough for specific hints there. Let's start with the power poles. So British Columbia has very reliably placed to the transformers, this gray box, uh, perpendicular to the rest of the power line. There's a shout out to ZigZag's video on power lines, maybe linked here, where I first heard of this meta. Um, and I think he cites his sources better for it. He heard about it. But the only other province that does this with any reliability is New Brunswick. And New Brunswick still doesn't do it quite as much. Uh, if we zoom in on the pole further, we can see a very thick metal guard and it flares at the bottom. So the very thick guard with the flare, that's very specific to BC once you can recognize it. Because of course, a lot of these metal guards are everywhere. But the next clue is risky which is also visible on exactly the same pole, third meta for the same pole, um, you can see this tiny metal rectangle that's affixed to it. I certainly don't have all of the little metal numbers and metal markers figured out for all of the poles in North America because they love putting metal things there. But this particular dimension of the rectangle, which can be either yellow or gray in this uh, image that we're looking at, it's very specific to BC and I haven't seen it anywhere else. So you can try to remember that. Um, then for more, more poll things, we have uh, this 
pole with the perpendicular line that's asymmetrical on the top. This is in the picture if you really zoomed in. Um, and this is common in a, not common, it's possible in a couple of countries, um, but it's more common in BC and it's, I'll just mention it. And then finally, something that you can see in BC, not in this picture, is these uh, cup-shaped metal joiners. Um, but they're much more common in either the US or Ontario. I'll just mention that you can see them in BC. That's the power line meta. Um, enough about poles, let's talk about license plates. Now we can't see any front license plates in this image. No image is perfect. It takes a while to find a good one, but British Columbia does use front plates and that makes it the same as Washington, the same as Oregon, and there's similar mountain states, unfortunately. It also makes it the same as Ontario and that can be confusing in the cities. So some advanced meta, which I mentioned in part one, is that if you zoom in on the rear plates, you can sometimes see this colored registration sticker that's in the bottom of a BC rear plate. Um, and that is not in Ontario, that it's not in any other province. It can be red, it can be blue, it can be green, colors like that often. So that can help. Are there other clues? Well, a pretty obvious one is on this sign. The area code for Greater Vancouver is 604, while the rest of British Columbia uses 250. There are only two numbers, so it's definitely worth remembering. Now, in random order of BC meta, it's not the biggest province on bollards, but they do use them fairly frequently, and there's a wide variety. The most common is the white square on a metal post, which we see on the left, but there are rarer bollards as well. So mostly featuring a white reflector on some kind of plastic bollard. Um, unfortunately, these bollards don't, they don't look anything like other provinces in Canada, but they can look a lot like bollards used in some of the Western states, so be careful. BC likes to use green backed signs a lot, although it's not 100%, but I haven't seen green backed signs anywhere else. I might be forgetting where else you could find them. Um, and these hanging signs can appear, especially in mountain passes, uh, where all of the signs are hanging down from an upper bar. I don't think you can see that anywhere else, but this is where it's frustrating because for example, a really good clue is that BC uses these concrete separators, these concrete guardrails on the sides of mo all of their highways. They never really use metal guardrails unless you're right near the border and Alberta is doing it. Um, so I thought that this was specific to BC and I could never find it in the Western states. And then just recently I found some of these concrete guardrails in the mountains on the Western states. Um, so nothing's perfect, but these are good clues to keep in mind, especially the greenback sign is being pretty specific to BC. And then I'll give a quick shout out to totem poles. Uh, these are traditional monuments for coastal First Nations. I've seen them a few times playing GeoGuessr, especially on Trekker coverage. And you'll especially see them around Vancouver, Victoria. These are coastal First Nations. So all of Vancouver Island, that kind of idea. Now returning to this picture, we know that we're in BC because of the poles and because of the license plate, if we're able to zoom anyway on the license plate. We know we're around Vancouver specifically because the area code. Can we get even more specific? There's one perfect clue that you can just barely see if you know what you're looking for. And I'll leave that as a cliffhanger for the city specific meadow, which we'll get to. Instead, let's start by covering the general geography of BC first. So here's a topographical map uh, on the left, and I'm going to be correlating it with cities and regions that are outlined on the right. So first, there are a few areas in BC that are fairly flat. So the Fraser Valley, it's just around Vancouver. It's kind of the breadbasket of BC, I think. And it looks hot and lush. It's got good precipitation. So you could see a lot of flat farms, orchards, vineyards, and there's either cities and mountains, but the mountains will be visible to the north. It itself is quite flat. And the other flat region is in the northeast in and around the town of Dawson Creek. Um, so this is going to be the only part of Northern BC with Gen 3 coverage. And now there's brand new Gen 4 coverage I just saw in Dawson Creek and all up the East Highway here that loops back into Alberta and just barely through Northwest Territories. So the landscape is very different from most of BC and it looks a lot more like the prairies just over the border in Alberta. Um, the rest of BC is covered with mountains and can be pretty hard to region guess in. In general, the mountains are usually a bit lower in the Northern coverage for most of the Yellowhead Highway. So, in the south, the mountains do change a bit from west coast to east coast. Um, so parts of Vancouver Island, 
or a temperate rainforest, and it might feature denser tree coverage or larger trees. It can still be surprisingly difficult to tell Vancouver Island apart from the mainland sometimes, though. As you move just east of Vancouver, we enter some of the hottest regions in Canada. So it's lower elevation still, but it's dry over that first mountain range. It's a popular tourist destination. The landscape can even look a little Mediterranean sometimes. So think vineyards, orchards, and lots of cottages by the lake. So this region starts around the town of Hope, and it goes out towards Lake Okanagan, including cities like Kelowna, Penticton, and even similar coverage in Kamloops. Um, as you go further and further east, you eventually hit the Rocky Mountains. And as the name suggests, you shouldn't expect to see trees on the tops of some of the tallest mountains. So another very rough and extremely inaccurate cheat code would be to say that mountains are larger the further you go south, uh, at least in a lot of the highway that's covered. And then you have fewer trees on top of the mountains the further you go east. That's not accurate overall, but it's pretty accurate to the Google cover. So let's go to city-specific meta, and we'll start with one of the most important city meta. Congratulations to anyone who was able to spot it without zooming, but you can just barely make out the Burnaby fire hydrant in this photo. Fire hydrants in North America are the ideal geoguessor clue. They're usually mandated to be on every block, painted colors that are easy to see, and with special laws that make them easy to see from a car, like a geoguessor car camera. So for example, it's illegal to park in front of a fire hydrant. Cities usually buy them in bulk and they use them as needed, so there's usually a specific color to a particular city or region. Now we've already seen that the Burnaby Fire Hydrant, it's an extremely recognizable Christmas tree and it's only found in Burnaby, BC, which is a suburb of Vancouver. The other unique hydrant in BC is found just east of Vancouver in Abbotsford and it's white with blue. Now, either fortunately or unfortunately, because you don't want to memorize a million fire hydrants, but most fire hydrants are not nearly as specific. The vast majority of Canada uses either red body fire hydrants or yellow bodied fire hydrants. When it comes to hydrants, the color of the body is much more reliable than the color of the nozzles, which are sometimes changed to reflect the flow rate for that hydrant, or just changed randomly for all I can tell. But the nozzle color can also sometimes help you pick a city as well. Now, you can't remember the color fire hydrant for every single city and town, uh, but luckily most in BC follow a very easy pattern. Yellow fire hydrants on the inside, including cities like Prince George, Kamloops, and Kelowna, and red fire hydrants on the extremes, so the eastern border with Alberta or the west coast. So Vancouver, Victoria, Prince Rupert, and many small towns in the mountain in the Rockies, coming all the way into, I think Castlegar still has red fire hydrants, if you know where Castlegar is. Um, it's not a perfect trend. There are some towns that buck that trend. There'll always be a small town that bucks the trend, but it's a very useful heuristic. Now let's start with Vancouver city meta. So first, remember that Vancouver uses red fire hydrants other than Burnaby. Um, to get even more specific, uh, Vancouver proper, so that's out here in the west, northwest area, uses all red fire hydrants with red nozzles, and the suburbs tend to have white caps. Vancouver is also much wetter than the rest of BC, so the ground often looks recently rained, and the sky is often overcast. And I've also noticed that the license plates often have a different grainy quality to them than other coverage, which, and it's fairly specific, at least to Canada coverage. Uh, it's a general wet Gen 4 vibe that I feel reminds me of Vancouver. Now, I've talked about how not to confuse Vancouver with somewhere like Toronto, license plates, power poles, and more. And you shouldn't confuse Vancouver with other cities further east because of uh, fire hydrants, general lushness further east in BC, I mean. And you shouldn't confuse it with other US cities because none of the big West Coast cities in the States use a red fire hydrant, which is very fortunate. Um, of course, there is hopefully country meta that you can also use to determine between US cities and Vancouver. By far the most vexing comparison for me is then Vancouver and Victoria, which to confuse non-Canadians even more, in case you weren't sure, Victoria is located on Vancouver Island and Vancouver is not. Now, first, a general vibe check between the two. Vancouver is much larger and an economic hub, and Victoria is a smaller city, which is a very popular place to retire. So Vancouver also has a bit more Generation 4 coverage, and more specifically, there are some things that separate Vancouver from every other city in BC, including Victoria. 
Vancouver uses its own transit system, and bus stops are marked with this T here on the left on a blue background. Every other city mostly uses BC Transit, which have the same bus stop signs, shown here in green for major bus stops or with this vertical variation for small bus stops. If you see a green bus stop or with a vertical variation, you are not in Vancouver. Now, the buses themselves also look different, and Vancouver buses have mostly blue base. Hopefully you can see it uh, through me mostly. Um, whereas BC Transit has a characteristic green and black stripe under the windows. Now finally, don't forget the area codes. Victoria is 250, like the rest of BC, and that's often the best way to tell it apart if you're not sure. Vancouver is also 10 times larger than Victoria, so it's almost certainly a safer bet if you're confused. Now let's zoom back out to our map of BC. For most of these cities, your best bet is to combine fire hydrant color with general temperature and landscape. For example, Prince George. Well, it's far north, so it's going to be cold, smaller mountains, yellow fire hydrants. Prince Rupert, far north, cold, smaller mountains, red fire hydrants. The only remaining cities I want to compare directly are Kamloops and Kelowna, and in the process talk more about the Okanagan region. So first of all, we've got Kelowna on the left and Kamloops on the right. We can again become more specific with the fire hydrants if we want. Kelowna almost always uses blue nozzles on the top and the sides with yellow and black on the front. Kamloops uses just a white cap on top of the yellow. I know some of you might be panicking right now, just how many fire hydrants am I going to have to remember in Canada? I've already said nozzle color isn't as reliable, and the nozzles are bound to be different colors in nearly all the smaller cities like Vernon, Penticton, etc, etc. Still, these are the next biggest cities in BC with yellow hydrants, so you can memorize them if you want. But the other things I want to say relate to the landscapes. Kelowna is directly on Lake Okanagan, and most of the coverage there was taken during the summer. So the summer coverage means that things are often hazy and occasionally quite smoky from wildfires. There's a lot of tourists, and it's very common to see things like cottages on the hills from a distance. This is also true of towns all the way up and down Lake Okanagan, which can get quite confusing. Kamloops is slightly smaller, and most of the coverage was taken in the fall. So although things are still pretty green, um, Kamloops is one example in BC where it can become really useful to just memorize one of the mountains or hills that are near the town. So this hill in front of us here in Kamloops is visible, it seems to me, from 90% of Kamloops uh, when you can pan around. So it's exactly the type of hill that you should that uh, you could get to guess this part of the world. It's dry, covered with some trees, but not many trees. It's not that big of a hill. But if you want to remember this exact hill, you can tell it Kamloops apart from Kelowna. And if you practice BC enough, that becomes useful. This is true of a lot of smaller towns too. They'll have like a ski hill that's really recognizable. You could decide to remember the ferny ski hill, but it's not always nearly as useful. Now, as we go through Canada, I will sometimes mention the garbage bins when I think they're particularly easy to remember or useful. I don't think that's usually true in BC. Garbage bins are often a good way to remember which city you're in, in either North America, I think also sometimes um, Oceania, but if you're close enough, many of these bins just say the city name on them, like Vancouver, Surrey, Richmond. Um, and if you're far away, now we're talking about how different are the bins really. So just imagine you decide to memorize Vancouver bins. That might mean at least five or six suburbs with different bins. Some of them look almost exactly identical to nearby cities from a distance. I'm trying to focus on easy to remember meta. It's here if you wanna look at it, but generally bins just aren't as useful in BC. So next, let's get to some rural meta. And as a disclaimer, I often get BC region guessing very wrong uh, when all I have to go on is the mountains. But let's start with smoky meta. So I already talked about wildfire smoke in and around Kelowna. The other main culprit is the highway from Kamloops to Prince George. And then it goes along to Prince Rupert along the Yellowhead Highway. So I hate wildfire smoke. I am glad to finally find one thing that has done useful in my life. Most of the rural tips I have for BC are actually related to trees. Allow me to present you with a map of trembling aspen distribution. Um, aspen are one of the easiest trees to recognize due to their handy feature of not being an evergreen tree, like most other things, and their white bark. So the most important thing to note is that there are relatively few aspens close to the coast, so it can help differentiate, say, uh, 
a region as not being on Vancouver Island, that kind of thing. Um, on a related note, even though aspens aren't particularly common in southeastern BC, this is where I tend to notice them the most because there's a lot of fall coverage. And aspens are really beautiful and more importantly distinctive in the fall. And they create this green and yellow patchwork with the evergreen trees. So this is a really common in coverage around towns like Nelson, Creston, etc. Now Vancouver Island is another place with distinctive trees if you get to know them. Although the trees vary a lot across the island due to climate and probably due to logging. Um, generally expect a lot of evergreen trees, uh, Douglas fir I think, and they're very green and bushy compared to other parts of BC. It's just more humid, more wet. So you may also see some very, very large trees, mossy trees, ferns, other types of flora that aren't common anywhere else in Canada and certainly nowhere else in BC. So crap, I thought I was done, but we still have half of Canada to cover in about five minutes. Uh, I don't know how important this is on most maps of the world, but if you play the GeoGuessr Canada map, the official one, they love giving you coverage up north. So I threw the area code on this map, good. Uh, but you're very unlikely to actually see the area code written out due to either not seeing phone numbers or you don't need to put the area code if you're, everybody knows they're in Northwest Territories. Let's pick apart the regions instead, starting with this purple section. The first thing to recognize about Northwest Territories and Yukon is the characteristic Generation 2 coverage. So a wide blur with a hint of blue, usually, and very faded, slightly tinted image, oftentimes. So these first images here are in Whitehorse the capital of Yukon, the furthest west. It's surrounded by mountains with notable white patches of rock, and they're almost always visible from anywhere in the city. So with even a little practice, I think Whitehorse should be an immediate send on NMPZ for most of you. There aren't really any other cities in the world with a combination of Generation 2 and these rocky low mountains. Now the next area for me to note is Kluane Lake, which is right here on a map of Yukon. So this lake is usually easily distinguishable because if you can't see the lake, um, you can at least see a big valley ahead of you before the mountains return again. It has the same old generation two coverage and a lot of these pink flowers up there somewhere um, and they're called fireweed. So they grow like crazy right after a forest fire. You can find fireweed all over the world and in the Northern hemisphere at least, but it's very common here near Kluane Lake. Now, although I thought this region was easy, as I went to prepare this slide, surprise, there's new Generation 4 coverage from only like two months ago, and it's just been updated on the official Canada map. So it hasn't been updated on the official Canada map yet, so I hadn't seen it, but it is there and it will be updated. So everything I said still stands. Kluane Lake is recognizable and has lots of fireweed, although this is later in the season, so now this pink fireweed just doesn't look as pretty. Um, but Whitehorse is still surrounded by White Rock Mountains, but the region is definitely about to make Canada harder to guess because now you have generation four in the Yukon. Next, let's move on to orange and green regions, which are both in Northwest Territories and most definitely do not have gen four coverage. Let's start with the orange circle, which is the Dempster Highway to Inuvik. Now, the further north you go, the shorter the trees get. This coverage also has a distinctly bad Generation 2 camera, which is strongly tinted, something like red, and often has blurs in it. I always know that I'm near Inuvik instantaneously. Inuvik itself is the most common location to get. Most of the houses are on stilts, and the trees are the same height as their houses. So this picture gives you a good indication of the road quality and density. It seems like Inuvik starts to experience fall in August, so I'm sorry. Anyway, Yellowknife is the capital of Northwest Territories, and it's located on Greater Slave Lake. I generally just remember it as Whitehorse without the mountains, and the same j blurry Generation 2 coverage that you would get in Whitehorse, for example. Now, I would definitely forgive you with mistaking Yellowknife with another town in northern BC that has Generation 2 coverage, or even northern Ontario that can look similar. But the big hint is with the license plates, which are shaped like a polar bear. So that's true in both Yellowknife and Inuvik, because even though Inuvik can only be reached through the Yukon, again, it is part of the Northwest Territories. Finally, it's time to do a boss rush through some of the other regions in Northern Canada, and we'll go west to east along this map here. Number one, Cambridge Bray Bay. It screams Nunavut because it has zero trees and only gravel roads. It's the flattest settlement with coverage in Nunavut. And the other defining feature are these white spheres near the airport here. If anybody knows what they are in the comments, you can tell me. 
Churchill, Manitoba is in the wrong video because, well, it's part of Manitoba, but it's cold northern coverage that seems most similar with none of it. So everything you need is in this picture. It's all snowy Gen 3, and it's got a big antenna here on the side. Uh, I can't think of anywhere else in the world that you can confuse with Churchill, but maybe I'm wrong. Kiki Tarjuak, I hope I said that. Kiki Tarjuak should never be confused with anywhere else in Canada because obviously it should be confused with Greenland. It's trekker coverage that looks exactly like Greenland. It's right next to Greenland. It has an Inuit name very similar to those in Greenland. You should remember it if you ever think, I'm in Greenland, why does that sign have English on it? Although the first language will actually be Inuit written in syllabics, so that's cool. And that brings us to the final location in Nunavut, which is a Akalit, and that's the capital city of Nunavut. It's very snowy, but a lot of things from the power poles to the vehicles look a lot more Canadian than Greenlandic. So I think it's a very gettable location. I'm pretty sure the first time I landed in Iqaluit, when I just started playing GeoGuessr, I got it right away because it just looks like the capital of Canada's coldest territory. Unlike Churchill, Manitoba, it doesn't have an antenna on the car and the houses are a bit more Northern, always on stilts and probably constructed elsewhere and then shipped over. Up until 2012, none of it plates also featured a polar bear like Northwest Territories, which you see here on the right. Um, but this coverage is in 2013, so you also see a mix with the new rectangular plates that have a touch of blue on the bottom, as with this red truck here on the left. And the last thing I'll leave you with is links to a few maps, which will be in the description if you want to practice these tips while they're fresh. The titles are pretty self-explanatory. So here, British Columbia and Northern Territories, and for the second map, BC and Northern Cities. I deliberately only included the most notable cities because that's definitely the best thing when you're starting to remember the meta. Later on, if you get really good at BC Cities and want to remember that Nelson has house numbers on green street signs, you can, but it's best to add the smaller cities one at a time to gain your knowledge. And that's all for now. Next week, I will be back with another video on the prairie provinces of Alberta Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. Each region has a different flavor. The meta is going to vary a little bit for what I will suggest, but the rhythm of the video should stay the same. The prairies are my home turf, so you'll want to tune in for the on-the-ground experience. And all right, don't get lost out there, folks.